everyone, welcome to Last Minute Maths again. And in this video, we're going to do a quick revision of the use of the quadratic formula. And uh, before we jump into it, please do check out the other quadratic equations videos I've got, completing the square forms and also factorization, etc., if you haven't already. Um, so without any delay, let's just get into it. The general form of a quadratic is, as I've said in my previous videos, is ax squared plus bx plus c. And if it's an equation, usually you're going to get something that equaling zero. All right. So when you have something like that, and they ask you to find the values of x for which that equation is true, i.e. equals zero, then you've got different methods available to you. So you can use completing the square, you can use factorization, graphical methods, if that's what they want you to do in the question. But if all else fails, the um, simple straightforward method, if you like, is using the quadratic formula, which is as follows. x is given by minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, all right? And those letters are referring to the coefficients of the equation itself. So a, b, and c, as in the equation. And the solution here from the quadratic formula, x equals something or another, is when the quadratic formula equals, or the quadratic equation, sorry, equals zero, all right? So let's use an example and uh, show you how it works, all right? So let's say, um, e.g. we have 2x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0, for example, all right? From that, we can actually note what the coefficients are. So you've got a, b, and c, all right? Watch out for one thing. A equals 2, nice and simple. But, all right, you've got to be careful. B equals minus 2, all right? And C equals minus 3. So you've got to watch out for the signs, okay? Are included in the coefficient. Okay, so it's not just the number, it's a sign as well. So do be careful about that. Don't forget to include that, all right? So using that and these values we have here, we can go to the quadratic formula and say minus b, so that's minus minus 2, all right? Plus minus minus 2 squared, so that's b squared, minus 4 times a times c. a is 2, that's fine. c is minus 3, all right? There we go. And then 2 times a, which is 2 times 2 again. Now let's tidy all that up, okay? Minus, minus 2, so a simple 2. And in the square root, we've got 4, minus, and then this times, 4 times 2 times minus 3 is minus 12, all right? Um, <clears throat> bear with me. What have I done? Minus 24. I should pay more attention to my own work, shouldn't I? Right, and all of that is over 4, okay? So, again, one further step of tidying up, 2, plus minus root 28, all over 4, and a little bit of thirds, because root 28 is the same as root 4 times 7, which is root 4 times root 7, 
So 2 root 7, all right? And so that comes to 2 plus minus 2 root 7 all over 4. And let's see what happens there. We get uh, two solutions. So effectively half plus minus half root 7. Okay. Now, this is known as the exact form. Exact or third form. All right. So in many cases, um, the question may say, leave your answer in cert form, then you just stop there. Okay. As it happens, if it comes out in a calculator paper, then you don't have to go out writing all of that out. You can actually just put the whole thing in your calculator, uh, probably right at the start, and get two values out for that. So if you were to actually calculate it, using our calculator, I think it comes to 1.82 and the other value is I think it's minus 0 0.82 and I'm going to just verify that with my calculator let's see what we get for that so um, 0.5 minus 0.5 times root 7 and that is minus 0 0.82 and those answers both of them are to two decimal places all right so in a non-calc paper you're likely to have this um, the exact or cert form non-calc and uh, the exact form there in terms of the uh, decimal places, that's going to be usually in a calc paper. All right, so the two forms. So that's all there is to it, really nothing complicated. Just one thing to watch out for. If the number inside the square root, if that comes out to be negative, all right, so I'm going to have to write this somewhere here, okay? If number in the root, or square root, is negative, then check again. You might have made a mistake because it should not be negative. And if it is negative, it can't be solved, all right? Because you can't square root a negative number, not as far as GCSE is concerned. All right, so watch out for that. Um, that's all there is to it. Quick, short revision. Um, there shouldn't be any more complication to that. All right, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please do leave it in the comments or any suggestions for another revision tips. At the time of this video, um, the maths papers are starting, I think, towards the end of this week in about three, four days. So if anybody has any particular topics they would like to see or a particular paper they want covered, then you're very welcome to put it in the comments and uh, please do subscribe and share. Thanks for watching again.